Hello, good evening and welcome back once again to the Racing Post studios uh, for In The Know, brought to you by the Racing Post and sponsored by Coral as we gear up for another big weekend of racing at Kempton, Newcastle and Linkfield uh, uh, for this uh, this weekend, which sounds like we're going to be previewing midweek all-weather action, but we, uh, we do have a bit of all-weather action, of course, the Winter Derby coming up at, uh, at Linkfield. We've got the Ida uh, for the Staying Chasers at uh, Newcastle, but most of the eyes will be over at uh, Kempton for the Coral Trophy. Uh, and plenty of novices and juveniles uh, alike in the Pendle, the Dovecote uh, and the Adonis as well. So uh, only a few weeks away uh, from the big festivals, uh, but a very different kind of fair on Saturday uh, and some decent cash on offer uh, for uh, uh, hopefully uh, some winners as well. That's what we're here for, of course, to try and guide you uh, in the right direction for Saturday's racing. This is live and interactive. Uh, thanks for watching uh, on YouTube and on Facebook. Like and subscribe as ever and get those comments and tips in and hopefully we'll get a few of those out as the evening progresses. My name is Ross Briley, pleasure to be back here uh, after uh, uh, having to, uh, to swim here uh, after missing Monday's show, uh, but uh, luckily uh, all the weather seems to have come in about a 10 day stretch uh, and it's quite nice and bright for the weekend. Uh, so uh, we actually do have an Ida chase of course this year, it must be dry if that race has survived. Uh, the uh, the weather conditions. Um, like I said, we've got plenty to look forward to as we uh, get stuck into the cards uh, on Saturday, uh, but it's not just me babbling to myself, although I'm more than used to that. Uh, I am uh, thankfully uh, joined by some of the finest minds we could uh, find in the building. And uh, luckily, uh, we'll be previewing the Adonis a little bit later on at Kempton, and we've managed to find our own uh, Adonis in the Racing Post studios. It is, of course, the one and only Mr. Paul Keeley. An absolute pleasure to be back in the room with you. Well, that's the last time anybody will ever call me Adonis, that's for sure. Oh, <laughs> uh, I'm sure, I'm, you know. Yeah, I, I'm really looking forward to this. I love this Kempton beating. Yeah. It's a cracking card right the way through. Um, got plenty of fancies, a couple in the Ida as well. Yeah. Uh, I did hear there was something about a flat race going on, but I haven't paid any attention to flat racing since November and have no intention of doing so, but I'll do my best. It's the, it's the, it's the winter derby. That's, uh, it's the, um, yeah, it is, a, it is a bit of a strange one, the winter derby. Obviously, yeah. we, 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 you, I mean, there's a couple of cracking horses running. You've got genuine group one. Yeah, I just haven't got a flat head on, I'm afraid. No, no, that's absolutely fair. Uh, but, uh, but a couple of handicap chases for you. Yeah, yeah, much more my thing. Yeah, absolutely. Paul Keeley then back in the uh, the studio, hopefully tipping winners uh, for this weekend. Certainly uh, a couple of races that are very much up his street. In fact, he's just checking his selections there, as you can see on the uh, the phone in the corner of the shot. <laughs> but uh, uh, from the Adonis in the studio, will be uh, also plenty of talk uh, about the uh, the dovecote later on this uh, afternoon, uh, this evening, in fact. Uh, but uh, just as much talk about a seagull's jumper as we go. <laughs> Oh, it's such a it's a terrible uh, terrible intro there, Tom. But uh, I almost got through it, but I became embarrassed about the thing I'd written myself. So, uh, good afternoon, good evening to you, Tom. You turned up today, have you, Ross? I have. Nice yeah. <laughs> yeah, I decided. Uh, I thought uh, I thought maybe a four hour delay the other day was uh, was stretching it a little bit. Um, but uh, but Bruce stepped in and, and did a fantastic job. Yeah, he's better than you, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. If I, if I feel like. Um, <laughs> I, th I should have got that. I should have got that intro right, and maybe this hostility would have died down. But thanks for the warm welcome, Tom. <laughs> My pleasure. Nice to see you, Ross. How are you? I'm all right, mate. I'm all right. Yeah, like I said, it was uh, it was pretty desperate uh, uh, last week, um, but it's, it genuinely seems like a completely different, uh, a completely different season outside right now. Yeah, it was lovely, wasn't it? Today it went for the old greyhound. It was really quite warm, and it's going to be nice again tomorrow, isn't it? So I think the ground at both Newcastle and uh, Kempton. Well, Kempton's always quite good at, for this meeting, or usually quite good for this meeting, but Newcastle certainly is normally dire, isn't it? But it looks like it won't be like that for the Ida, so be a better spectacle, hopefully. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think uh, since, since its inception in 1952, Tom, uh, 21 times the Ida's been abandoned, which is, uh, is a pretty, uh, pretty spectacular strike rate. Yeah, I've seen some pretty awful uh, renditions of it when it's been... Uh, uh, run anyway on heavy ground. We've had a couple of finishes or one finisher one year, mm. I think. Uh, so hopefully that won't be the case this year. 17 runners, really cracking, really competitive race up there. Really looking forward to it all tomorrow. Yeah, albeit uh, if it goes the way of most staying handicap chasers, um, the uh, the front two will be there throughout, and 15 of them won't get involved. But uh, we'll uh, we'll see what people fancy for the uh, the Ida. Uh, but of course the uh, the big. Uh, uh, the big cash pot on the at the table this weekend is the the Coral Trophy, and uh, and Simon Clare is personally responsible uh, for uh, for doubling that uh, that prize fund. Uh, Simon, what a what a grand gesture from you that is! 
Yes, listen, I'll just come to that. I, I was like Joey Tribbiani, our friends there, trying to work out your intro, but it's Dove Coat Seagull's Jumper, wasn't it? Yeah, I won, very... did I? It was, it, was, it, was, it was about as, I mean, it's normally Teddy was that's good. from me, but that was, uh, that was pretty special. I thought it was good. It just I, I chuckled about a minute <laughs> after when I'd worked it out. It's like doing Wordle or something. But um, yeah, listen, <laughs> and, and more seriously, um, I love this meeting, like, like Paul said, and, and I've got great memories of it when it was sponsored by the Racing Post for many, many years. I mean, it was sponsored by the Racing Post when Desert Orchid won the race off a mark of 185, giving off 12 stone three, giving more than two stone to all his rivals. Uh, back in 91, I think it was. Um, loads of good winners since. Docklands Express, Naka Rats, um, you know, it was a dashing grey, won it twice. Um, but it had, it was worth 100 grand in 2003, and it was still worth 100 grand two years ago. And it just kind of fallen away and had a different sponsor every year. And so I actually, when, when the Lanzarote race day came up, actually, I spoke to Jacob said, look, is there any chance of also picking up this meeting? Because in many ways, although we, the Lanzarote was fantastic, we put some more money into that, and it was a 20-runner race. I sort of feel this is the meeting which really has the potential to get, to climb back up, being a really uh, massive February event, and um, and so we we put extra money in. It's worth 150 grand, which is a record for this race. It's worth more than any handicap at Cheltenham, um, and yeah, and I think we've got a good field. I'd like to get 20 runners next year, but for starters, 14 runners, a really good field, and we boosted the Adonis and the Pendle as well. And we've got a really good Adonis. We've got probably what you'd expect in the pedal of Pendle at the moment, a five runner race and a Grade Two, but. Uh, and the card as a whole is cracking. So uh, looking forward to it. Uh, can't wait to go tomorrow morning, and um, it should be a good day. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. And uh, like I said, hopefully we'll, we'll get a few winners on the uh, the board as uh, well. Um, uh, we've uh, also got a, a members club offer as well if you if you want to get involved in that. Uh, pay £9.99 for your first month for the Racing Post Members Club. Uh, and of course you'll get all the... Uh, at the angles from uh, top tipsters like Paul Keeley and Tom Siegel and uh, a lot more besides. So get involved uh, on that Racing Post Members Club offer £9.99 for your first month. Hello to everyone watching at home as well. Like I said, this is live and interactive. The, uh, the chat is already uh, uh, is already hotting up. Paul Hayward said uh, that flat racing is for the spring. Tom Leach said flat racing is for the bin. Uh, so uh, <laughs> <laughs> have a couple of strong, Good lad. St strong opinions there. <laughs> uh, Luke Salmon says he's delighted to see Paul Keeley. Uh, so so, uh, so that's uh, that's uh, that's good. That's a bit of a uh, uh, a positive <laughs> for that one. Lad. <laughs> and Hugh Masson's already uh, lost. Ro Ross to wear a check shirt at one to three uh, as uh, as being downed. <laughs> Simon to tip a Tizard horse at two to nine. I think that's a, a little bit Ooh. more likely. Uh, so uh, so <laughs> yeah. good luck with that. Could those. happen. I think it could happen as well. I think it could happen as well. Uh, right, let's get stuck into uh, tomorrow's racing then uh, with the the opener at uh, Kempton, uh, which uh, uh, is a an interesting uh, little uh, handicap chase here. Uh, this uh, this one fifteen uh, over at uh, at Kempton, um, and uh, the the favourite here is uh, Patroclus at one hundred and thirty. In fact, joint favourites with Flematic. Uh, it is uh, four to one Derian de Carjac, uh, fifteen to two one Drew King, not a role model. Uh, at 15 to 2, La Chameleon at 8 to 1, Foxborough at 10 to 1, Neil the Legend at 16 to 1, and, uh, and bigger prices of the US for this uh, two and a half mile uh, handicap chaser. And uh, that two and a half mile handicap chase has Paul Keeley written all over it here uh, for this uh, this opener at uh, Kempton. We're going to look at tomorrow. Uh, and uh, got a couple of informed horses. Flamatic in particular was uh, very impressive uh, last time out. Um, Petro Patroclus. Mm. For, for Nicky Henderson comes in off the the back of a win as well. You've got a couple of well-handicapped types down the uh, down the bedding. Uh, yeah, potentially. I mean, Flag Mary did win quite well, and I actually backed all, of all the gin joints who were second for the for the for the big race, who unfortunately didn't make it among the entries. So uh, he's definitely he's definitely going the right way. Um, I just I wonder about him coming back to to two and a half. And I'm very interested and quite strongly fancy Dave under Carjack anyway. Okay. I think uh, a little bit like one of our favourite Zanza later on. He's just been running at Cheltenham, which I don't think he particularly likes. He makes mistakes there, and but he still run well. He's been he was fifth in uh, in the Racing Post Gold Cup, fifth again at the New Year's Day meeting. Uh, wasn't actually beaten that far on, on nine and a half lengths, I think, um, in the Paddy Power as well. Uh, dropped eight pound for it, which makes him something like seventeen pound lower than his peak when he was a novice. When he won, you know, he had some really good flat track form. Uh, it'd be a good beat a fair, fair field at Huntingdon on his debut. He ran, he ran and then third to Champ was still in it at the last uh, in, a, in a grade two at Newbury. Uh, and he's down to a mark of 129. And uh, as Tom said, the ground is going to get quicker and the quicker the better for him. Uh, I think they changed the ratio of, to 50 50, good, good to soft and good. Uh, and it's only going to go uh, more towards good 
uh, tomorrow. So I think it's going to be bang perfect for him. And I'll be disappointed if he's not right on the premises. I think not a role model could be a danger at a bigger price. Um, didn't run at all well last time, but on ground he doesn't really want. He's back on decent ground and Sam Thomas is a flying. He is. He is indeed, yeah. Uh, three uh, winners on the uh, the bounce, so uh, potentially a, a bigger price uh, runner there for not a role model. But like you said, yeah, I mean, the amount of... We'll see a couple of horses later on, of course, as you said about Zanza, but um, when we get to Cheltenham, you see a lot of horses who who would love you. Your Ascots and Kemptons mm. coming to the back off big wins there yeah. and then don't handle yeah. Cheltenham. Um, yeah. this you quite is, often is reverse, see horses jump better on better ground as well. The, the, yeah. the, the dodgy jumpers, it's just easier for them, isn't it? Like, you know what I mean? So I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful that Dave Undercarriage will do that as well. Uh, and if so, he's definitely got a good prize in him off a mark of 129. OK, uh, Dave Undercarriage then a four to one uh, shot, a uh, nine-year-old against a couple of inform uh, unexposed tights, but he is very well handicapped on his best. Uh, that's the pick for uh, for Keels. Tom, did you uh, like anything in this race? Not really. Uh, I thought it was it was very trappy. I get Keels' Dave Undercarriage angle clearly. I mean, I was he was in my horses to follow list. He was nearly top of it after he won at Huntingdon on his first uh, or one of his first starts over over fences. I thought he was electric. Uh, Things haven't gone right, but as Kiel said, he's probably never really had the conditions he wants ever since. He had it once at Newbury and he gave Ch- Champ a race. Ever since then, he's been running around on soft ground at Cheltenham. And as Kiel says, uh, uh, that's not his bag. A little bit, I've been backing a few Alan King horses this week and they've all run a bit disappointing, but I don't think that should be a problem for day round the car, Jack. I think generally his horses are running well. So, yeah, he'd be my one. I think Patroc- Patroculus, or whatever it's called, or Patroclus, uh, is the danger. Six-year-old Nicky Henderson, Kempton. We all remember what happened at the Lanzarote meeting. I think he had three or four winners, unexposed, likes good ground. Don't know how good he could be. One better hurdles for him where he beat Riggs and another decent horse has uh, worked out well. So uh, I think he's the danger. I don't. I like. I like Kiel said phlegmatic back in trip on this ground. I'm not sure. I think one true king. And, um, uh, he's had a lot of hard races recently. So I, th- I, I make it between the two. Uh, not sure I'll be having a bet because I think it's very trapped. Yeah, it certainly looks it, doesn't it, uh, on paper. Uh, even the likes, yeah, Le, Le Chameleon was uh, pretty impressive last time out, finally getting his act together. Foxborough keeps hitting the frame. It almost looks a, that's a straight bat bet for me. Foxborough to, uh, to finish in the, uh, the places, keeps putting in decent performances, but can't quite put it all together to win. But uh, like you said, it is that kind of race. Uh, Simon, any angles, any betting angles, any form angles here for what looks a, a tough race? A strong view from, uh, from Keels, quite the opposite from Tom. Yes, yes, although settling on the same horse as Ginchy is the horse I like as well. I must have been just looking at that gel form. This is sort of a step down, really, in competitiveness versus those three handicaps he's been contesting. Alan King's won the race a couple of times before, for whatever that's worth. And, um, you know, he, he looks well handicapped, doesn't he, versus his best. I think he ran at Cheltenham, I'm simply the best off of 145 or something. So he's um, he looks uh, an obvious type. I mean, the biggest price winner in 10 years has been seven to one. There's been five favourites one of that time. So it looks like the sort of race where it does pay, pay to folks at the front end of the market. So I'll go for Dayrand Akarjak as well. Uh, the Indino special is a Nicky Henderson trained winner. He's got Patroclus, obviously, that the, the, the lead contender is two, and then an outsider, Neil the Legend. So you basically get him thrown in as well, and it's three to one uh, from five to two, uh, a Nicky Henderson winner. Okay. And the, uh, a tentative opener for uh, for a few of us, though, but Keels, you're quite uh, keen on the King runner. Yeah, Dayrand Akarjak for me. Okay, very well. All right, good luck if you are playing in that. Uh, open is also that price boost for a Nicky Henderson trained horse to win the 115, 3 to 1, out from 5 to 2. Uh, from the, uh, the handicap chase there at uh, Kempton Farm at 115, then we, uh, we have a look at the, the juvenile hurdlers and a, uh, a final chance to throw down a, a triumph challenge for a few of these uh, runners, uh, albeit the, the race is uh, not quite as good as it used to be. Uh, like it's a well chief and Kasbar Bliss and Punjabi, Binocular, Soldatino, Zark Andrew. It had a really good roll call a few years ago at the Adonis, but it has gone a bit quiet over the past decade. But it looks a good lineup this year. Knight Salute is 2 to 1 favourite. Pleasant Man, 9 to 2. Impulsive 1, 13 to 2. Mocha Devassi, 15 to 2. 9 to 1 Greystone. And Teddy Blue, an 11 to 1. And bigger the rest. I was going to go over to Tom uh, and say from one pleasant man to another, but after what he said <laughs> at the start of the show, <laughs> I'm going to take it all back. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, it used to be, uh, the Adonis used to be a, a, a real springboard for, uh, for grade one glory, but um, not quite as, uh, as good recently, uh, Tom. But um, you've got a couple well, of horses coming into this off the back of, 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 uh, of really impressive performances, and you've got French recruits, flat recruits. It looks quite good this year. I think three years ago, since Fusil Raffles won it, uh, Ross, he went on to win the Punchstown mm. grade one, didn't he? I, I, I wouldn't be... But he's, so not quite, he's not quite well chief and 
uh, binocular and so on I and so he, forth. Yeah, it? but I think he might have won the triumph if he hadn't been injured. Uh, and then we would be talking about him and along with Zarkander and uh, the other one, uh, Soldatino, who all won this race and went on to win the triumph. Mm. I still think it's a great race. Tritonic, he might not have won the triumph last year, but he came out and won that big handicap that Ascot earlier in the season. I, I, I like one in this race. I, I cannot, for the life of me, get the price of Impulsive 1. Uh, he was too keen when Knight Salute beat him at this track. He was also giving him £7. He made the running. Doesn't like making the running. Then he went to Doncaster. Crown was too soft. Still good form, just behind uh, Porticello. And I thought he was miles better at Musselburgh last time. I thought he chased a really, really strong pace. The three of them went clear. The two that he chased were beaten about 100 lengths. Uh, all these, all the uh, sort of sneaky ones held up at the back came and had a crack at him. And he just went went by, went went again and went clear on the bridle. I think got a cracking chance, impulsive one. I think he'll beat Knight Salute. I think this is his triumph hurdle. And I think Knight Salute is waiting for the triumph hurdle. You know, that's where he's going to be seen at his best. The one I don't know about is Pleasant Man. But if he can beat those two first time up, then he has got a chance in the triumph because they're just about the best juvenile hurdlers we've got. And I think it's a tough task for him because I think he was a stayer on the flat and this is going to be sort of a, a quick horses race. But I'm very keen on impulsive one. I think he can win and I can't work out why he's three and a bit times the price of the favourite. OK, uh, impulsive 132. Yeah, I guess it is just that obvious form line of, oh, he's beaten him uh, twice, Tom. But if it was that simple, then, well, we wouldn't need this show, would we? <laughs> well, he also, you remember the first time at Kemp's, Impulsive One was short price favourite to beat him, was giving him £7. Now they're off yeah. level weights. There was not that much between them. I don't think there's that much. And I just think Impulsive One was miles better last time. I think he's really found the way to race. He's a really quick herder and he's settling much better. I think he'll win tomorrow. Okay. Impulsive one, then, is a 13-2 uh, two, uh, two shot. Uh, yeah, Pleasant Man, we'll mention him. He uh, ran a cracker in the Melrose and won at Yarmouth. Rated 95 for Roger Charlton. Pied Piper, uh, for example, is rated 96. Uh, uh, the Nichols team have won this five times with 26 runners. Owners, obviously, like this with Tritonic. Um, and you've got a couple of other horses in. I thought Greystone was a little bit interesting. Um, he's, uh, he's, a, he's a horse who, if he makes a run and gets out in front, he, he's two from three, and the, the defeat was when he fell three lengths clear. Yeah, if he it, doesn't, he's too keen. So if he got if he got loose on the lead, I thought he'd have a chance. Well, it looks like he can get loose on the lead, doesn't it? My only worry is Lucy Wondham's horses are all getting beaten a long way at mm. the moment. I mean, she hasn't had many runners, uh, but they haven't exactly performed very well. But I did think, you know, his, his form is probably comparable to, to, to Knight Salute's. Um, you can like Knight Salute, can't you? Because he's, you know, he having looked... Regressive on the flat, he suddenly looks progressive over hurdles, doesn't he? And he, he does seem to try. He just keeps winning. Doesn't yeah, he, he keeps <laughs> winning. He was probably a bit flattered to beat Porsche Cello, who made a right mess of a, of a couple of hurdles in that Donny race. But you know, he's the one. He's, he's definitely the one to beat. And again, we don't know about these unraced. He's not the only unraced horse uh, in, in Pleasant Man. I mean, obviously, he's similar ability to, to both Pied Piper and Vorban. But the famous five of um, of Venetia. Williams um, wasn't a mile behind them uh, in, on, on French flat form, and she's entered him in the triumph. And obviously Nichols has got the other one, Rubo, as well from France. Uh, it's too much of a guess up for me to say I really fancy anything. I'd have had an each way bet on Greystone, but I'm a little bit worried about the uh, form of the yard. And I certainly do understand Tom's case for impulsive one. Okay, there we go. The uh, honest hurdle. Then Sam Caney says, "Can you guys see Knight Salute?" Top five in the triumph, or uh, going to the uh, the Boodles. Um, well, I think if uh, I think if Knight Salute wins, I mean he's won, he's won four races, a Grade Two already. If he if he wins, or even gets narrowly beaten in the Adonis, um, Milton Harris doesn't seem like a man, Simon, to uh, to back down from a challenge. Surely he'll go for a triumph. I think you've got to assume he will. But if he wins, or maybe he's a running on staying on second, or even I suppose even third, I'm sure he'll win. I thought I half thought that might be the betting angle with Pleasant Man. I sort of think he backed him at sixteen to one, non run, no bet for the Triumph. I feel like he'll only go there if he if he if he improves his chance, like wins or, or is a staying on second and shortens in the betting for the Triumph. Not that I think you know it's going to be a tough ass beating the Irish. I know in the Triumph hurdle, but I, I'm, I think this is a fantastic race. And you know, for all it hasn't thrown up a Triumph hurdle win in the last ten years, it has been won by good horses like you said, Boozer Rapples, Tritonic last year, um, and it used to. You know, Penzance, My Sil, Caterino, Snowdrop. I think it was six as well as Sarkander and Soldatina between '94 and 2011. So obviously now we're sponsoring it. I'd love to see it go on and throw up the Triumph hurdle winner. Um, 
I think, you know, Knight Salute uh, is very, very solid at two to one. You know, he keeps winning. My concern about Pleasant Man is his winning four on the flat was a mile six, mile four. I just wonder whether he might be a sort of proper stayer rather than a speed horse for Kempton. So I'd probably keep an eye on him for the future. But uh, I think the favourite's very, very solid, Knight Man. Keeps winning. Uh, I'd probably stick with him. OK, very well. Uh, so completely different opinions from uh, from everyone then for the uh, for the Adonis. Um, like I said, plenty of opinions at, uh, at home. Uh, Off-world, um, Knight Salute, no chance at Cheltenham, but Tom Leach thinks Knight Salute is unbeaten and he's short and probably wins. Uh, so uh, plenty of uh, uh, differing options at home. But um, let's go for uh, the Adonis tips then, starting off with you, Mr Paul Keeley. Uh, a very tentative greystone each way. OK, uh, greystone each way. Uh, I thought we were going to disagree, but yeah, I, I agree entirely, greystone. Uh, I think he could get loose on the lead and, uh, and run a good race. Fart Lucy Wadham. Uh, you're going against us, Tom. Quite a strong pick from you. Yeah, the faster Greystone goes, the easier I'm impulsive one or win, I think. Uh, <laughs> what what you've got to say, though, I mean, talking of uh, horses here, Night Salute cost 14,000 guineas at the sales. Pleasant Man, 175,000. And uh, the Flying Five, or whatever, the famous five, 250,000. Wow. So if... Uh, if Knight Salute could beat them, what a bargain we've got there. What you, uh, Milton Harris picked up there. Yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and Milton Harris, I mean, again, what a season he's having. I think it's a 21, 22% strike rate he's running. <laughs> um, and uh, it would be a, a, a big winner for him. Uh, and you think he'll continue the winning streak, Simon? I do. I think he'd be the one horse I'd sort of pick for a win bet. I, I've, I should mention the Indiana Special and Paul Nichols to win the Adonis. It's, he's 100 to 30 from 11 to 4. So that takes in Pleasant Man and Rubo, both first time out. Uh, ex-French flat horses and I have actually I must admit I had a few quid on Pleasant Man uh, for the Triumph non-runner no bet because I think it's, he'll only go there if he and he could you know he's rated he, he had form with Pied Piper he's highly run it's a 95 rated flat horse I mean if he was to win this and win well he could be like six to one for the Triumph but then so I could I'll, he'll probably run third I mean 25 for the Triumph and still run and I'll my, my strategy would have flopped but uh, there you go well or knowing the uh, the trainer as well then um, that the juvenile hurdle at Aintree uh, is uh, exactly. It's very much a Paul Nichols uh, benefit, isn't it? So, uh, okay, that's the Adonis hurdle then uh, at uh, Kempton tomorrow uh, at 150 contest. There's your prize boost as well, Paul Nichols to win the Adonis 130 out from 11 to four. Uh, moving on then, uh, sticking with uh, with Kempton over uh, the bigger obstacles here uh, for uh, the the Pendle Novices Chase uh, over uh, the two uh, and a half miles or two and a half and half a furlong, uh, which could make all the difference. A uh, small field, but a, a couple of classy animals, headed by Pick Doy at 15 to eight, Manella Drama at nine to four, Fantastic Lady at seven to two, Miller's Bank at nine to two, and Goa Lil, 40 to one uh, in the, the mix. Probably to try and pick up a, a bit of black type in this uh, this small field. Uh, but uh, we've got uh, another uh, nickel strain runner here and uh, in the shape of uh, Pick Doy, who um, has been in, uh, in good form over fences, could have been unbeaten outside a grade one company if it wasn't for falling at Newbury and clearly came up against a nice type last time out and he's up against an informed northern raider in Manila Drama and an informed mare in the shape of Fantastic Lady and a horse who's got plenty of ability if he makes it round, Miller's Bank. This is um, an intriguing contest. Guys. Yeah, it's trappy again, isn't it? Um, I do think, talent-wise, I think Pick Dewey's probably got the most. Um, he's given fair bits of weight away. He's got to give £12 to Fantastic Lady for a start. Uh, and he did run badly last time at Sandown when the, when the Paul Nichols runners, all apart from Dolos, who wins that Sandown race nearly every year, uh, all ran terribly and he just sort of stopped to a walk, didn't he? So it, it, trainer must be happy enough with him to bring him back out and I think the better ground will suit him. He's one of those horses that when he, get, when he gets his jumping right, it's really good, mm. you know, low, fast. Uh, and when he doesn't, he goes straight through one and fall over. So it's a little <laughs> bit of a worry there, but I think he's the best horse. Uh, I do like Manella Drama, he's a bit of a character, but I think he's quite tough and, uh, uh, and, and when he's on a going day, he, he's pretty good and since, you know, he moved up to two and a half mile last time and won really well. Um, I don't really know about it, I mean, he has won on good ground, um, but a lot of his form is on, is on much softer ground. Um, and yeah, Miller's Bank looked really, really good at Huntingdon and hasn't got around since. And, you know, he's had a wind operation. Don't know what to make of him, but it wouldn't be a surprise. And it wouldn't be a surprise if Fantastic Lady won getting all that weight. So uh, I'm edging towards Pictory, but again, no confidence. OK, uh, Pictory then, uh, 15 to 8 shot. Miller's Bank, of course. Uh, I mean, since Huntington, he's gone to Newbury and Cheltenham and he's back here at Kempton. So this should be more suitable uh, in theory. Um, yeah, Manila Drama is a, a, a quirky one, potentially, uh, Tom, but... Um, the only horse to beat him over this trip has been my Drogo, and um, I'm, I was pretty impressed with the way he, he battered Shake Him Up Harry, and that one's run well since in a, a decent handicap. Uh, Donald McCain, Brian Hughes, uh, practically unbeatable this season. They are coming down south, of course, which 
That happens a lot, doesn't it, for, for northern raiders? Dominate uh, up north, come down south and, uh, and get, a, uh, get a bloody nose. Yeah, it does, but not all the time. Uh, Donald McCain, obviously, back in the day, was winning Cheltenham races and, you know, lots mm. of them. So uh, wouldn't be worried about that. Uh, I think he's got a good chance. I, 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 I'm, I like Pick Dory. I think he's the most talented horse, but he's obviously got had breathing issues, clearly, because he choked last time. Uh, I think he's probably, as Teal said, the most talented. I think Minnesota Drama is the most solid because I think he jumps the best. Uh, Miller's Bank obviously has the two U's by his name, but he was running really well at Newbury when was it Pit Dory fell in front of him actually. So uh, he, he's got a chance. Fantastic lady, I think's got a bit to prove, but it's Nikki Henderson at Kempton, so we can't rule her out. I, mm-hmm. I personally, at the prices, will, will side with Manella Drama just because I think he's going to run his race for sure. But like Keel says, Pit Dory might be the most talented, and if he gets his act together, I think he'll probably win, but not for me at fifteen to eight. Okay, yeah, picked already 15 to 8. Uh, but uh, Manila Drama is a, a 9 to 4 shot. And uh, yeah, I backed him a couple of days ago, Manila Drama. I thought this looks an ideal uh, race for uh, for him. And like I said, that form looks good last time out. Uh, I think we can certainly forgive him uh, being uh, beaten at, uh, at Sandown behind Edward Stone. Um, but uh, yeah, this looks absolutely ideal for for Manila Drama. He uh, quite a fairly fairly confident selection to uh, tomorrow from, uh, from me, Simon. So we've got a bit of... Again, we've got a mix. It seems every... Uh, it's one of those days where everyone likes mm. different types of races. Uh, which is which is good. It shows we've got a good varied card. <laughs> Definitely. I mean, I mean, Paul Nichols has got the most extraordinary record of this race. He's won it eleven times in sixteen years. You know, so even just you know, even blind, uh, we 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 prepared some content, got the old footage of those even before we knew whether he would have any entries and runners, but we knew he would. And here he's got the the highest rated horse, the favourite. It sort of almost feels too obvious. And and some ways, I'm surprised it isn't shorter. It hasn't been well backed because as I say, on on on, on that sort of evidence. You know, you fancy him strongly. So there's a slight concern. He's, he's, he's a fair price, really. But um, great to see a Northern Raider. As I say, Nicky Henderson's mayor. You know, you'd respect him, but she seems to have a bit to do. So I, I, I'm going to be really boring. Um, on a day when I think, quite, you know, I came to this sort of track where you can have a few favourites winging in, I think Pick Dory is the best horse. And, you know, forgiven that last run, he, you know, he should have three ones by his name before that. I think he went. OK, there you go. Um, playing it, uh, playing it simple. Then Victoria, yeah, looking at uh, uh, the uh, Nichols uh, record in this: twenty-three runners, eleven winners, uh, six pound fifty-three at level stake profit, uh, which uh, is about what you'd expect. Because yeah, there's not many Nichols runners going to go off at big prices in this, Simon. Yeah. That's true. No, that is fair point actually. Yeah, you you have pointed that out. And he's probably had a few, uh, he's probably had a few short price losers as well at that mm. time as well. No, but like you said, it's, it's you know trainers are. We say this yeah. every time, don't we? Creatures of habit. They have the races mm. they like to aim for. It's probably you know weeks or months in advance starting to think right which ones are we going to uh, aim for races so it is significant that he turns up uh, but uh, Pick Doy is a, a 15 to 8 uh, favourite and of course he will have potentially uh, an impact on Lon Presse's uh, form at, uh, at Cheltenham um, Paul Keeley what maybe wins the pendle? Yeah Pick Doy for me Pick Doy uh, Mr Tom Siegel uh, I will side with Manella Drama Ross Okay, very well. Manella drama for uh, for me as well. Uh, one of uh, a million Manella horses who've been in good form this season. Simon, yeah, pick Dory for me. There we go. Two for pick Dory. Two for Manella drama uh, at uh, at home. Uh, no, uh, Miller's Bank won't get round, says uh, Hugh Masson. Uh, so uh, and uh, Manella drama for Kieran Catterson uh, as well. Good evening to you, Kieran, uh, for the uh, the Pendle novices chase. Sticking with Kempton then, uh, for the uh, the Dovecut, uh, an obvious hurdle here, over two miles, grade two contest, another uh, big field, bit of a top heavy market, but no uh, great surprise there, we've got a couple of progressive types uh, going to uh, to war uh, for, for Gary Moore and uh, and Chris Gordon, who normally you'd see him uh, battling it out at uh, Plumpton, but here they are with favourite and second favourite at Kempton in this uh, grade two contest, shall we, have, shall we have one more, is five to four, sound like I have. Had one more. Uh, seven to two is Orkin Risk. Ikeo nine to two. Fred Armey is seven to one. Monaco de Vassi twelves. Russian Ruler at fourteens and twenty-five to one. And bigger the rest. A couple of really impressive winners here at the top of the market. Uh, Tom, shall we have one more? Of course, who's uh, got Constitution Hill form uh, and uh, Orkin Risk, who just keeps on going through the grades for uh, for trainer. I'm um, really warming to. He's always been good, Chris Gordon, but uh, he's having a good season and he he knows where to place his horses. 
Yeah, tremendous trainer Chris Gordon. I've got a I've got a problem with awkward wrists though. I, ma- I managed to I managed to get him beat at Plumpton three <laughs> steps ago from a short head. Couldn't believe it. I thought it was the biggest certainty look through a bridle, and he got beat by one of Nigel Twiston Davis. And since then, he's improved about thirty pounds. He was really impressive last time, wasn't he, at Wincanton? Uh, that was that was a massive step forward, I thought. But I think he's taking on a, one that's probably a bit too good for him. Shall we have one more? I was, I've loved the way he's travelled through his races in every race. I thought he was impressive at Sandown last time. I think, he, I think he'll end up being a lot better than these, and uh, he'd be my select in what is a very, very good race. I like ACO as well. I thought he was impressive here on his debut. Obviously, pulled far too hard behind Pied Piper last time, but you know he gets the allowance here. Uh, being a four-year-old, you know he's getting a lot of weight, uh, nine pounds. But I still think, shall we have one more or beat him? Okay, shall we have one more, more? Is a fight of four shot uh, for Gary Moore uh, and uh, and Joshua Moore uh, uh, for the, the Kempton at three o'clock. Shall we have one more? Is a question I've asked Paul Keeley uh, plenty of times mm. in the uh, the past. Are you with or against this favourite? Uh, always after one more, mate. So yes, <laughs> <laughs> definitely. Uh, yeah, I like him. And I said so. We did the Monday show. And it was one hundred to thirty. I said he'd be near a five to four on the day, and that's exactly what he is. Uh, he, you know, you could argue that he doesn't quite have the best form about the weights with uh, Isio, with what Isio did at, uh, at Kempton over Christmas, but I just don't think we've seen the best of him. I mean, he, he pretty much toyed with walking on air in a bumper or decent ground here last season, didn't he? And I think, I think that's probably what he wants. Uh, and now they found out if, 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 if what they need to do with him is just go on and let him gallop rather than hold him up and, uh, and let him tug like mad. Um, he didn't half look good at Sandown. I think he'd win. Uh, Paul Nichols says he's worried about the ground drying out for Isio. Uh, and I think, yeah, he's just probably a um, different class of these. OK. Um, shall we have more than uh, one more then? Is, I still can't say that name. It's five <laughs> to four. Um, luckily, uh, I, uh, I fancy Orchid Risk, so I don't have to go for the, the favourite. I, again, I was, I was just so impressed with him. Uh, on his last couple of starts, yeah, I don't, I don't know how you got him beat, Tom, because um, he's clearly got quite an engine. He's uh, he's a little bit keen. It might just have taken a couple of runs to uh, get him used to the game, but he came off the bridle a long way from home last time out, and the the, the figure was incredible. I thought if he put up nine pounds, um, I thought he might go for an Imperial Cup, but um, it could well be this and then a County Hurdle Challenge. But I thought it was quite interesting. Chris Gordon won exactly the same two races at Plumpton with Highway 102 and then came here and bolted up in this race. Um, and for me, he's doing better speed figures, so I think he's uh, he's interesting. Yeah, very much so. He looked really good, as you say, at, at Wincanton. Just think he might be taking on something that's really, really good in uh, Shall We Have One More. Uh, they've been backing him like he's a good horse, and they don't get mm. much wrong the Moors. They backed him against Constitution Hill mm. that day, and uh, the heavy ground was all against him. I just think, I just think, I like Orkin Risk. I get your idea. I get your, your your reasoning. I just think that he's biting off a bit more than he can chew. Okay, very well. Uh, well, we'll uh, we'll see. I mean, if he, yeah, if he does run a good race, he can still uh, have a chance in some decent handicap hurdles. It's not just a two-horse race, like you said. A KO, uh, Freire Dam has uh, uh, looked impressive, and obviously has Balco Coastal form as well to bring into it. Uh, and Morocco de Vassi, who um, was uh, was pretty impressive uh, uh, last time out at Doncaster, despite blundering through the final hurdle, uh, powered home to win in good style. So, um, yeah, open little races, Simon. Yeah, it's a good race, isn't it? I mean, just discuss, just listen to the guys discussing it, actually. I keep sort of m- m- bouncing around with different views. What's quite interesting is Orkin Risk, both his last wins, he's beaten Gary Moore horses into second place, mm. and there's loads of confidence behind, shall we have one more? Does that tell you a story that they they almost are looking at the collateral form and think, yeah, you know, we know our horse is good and... Um, and so to that end, I mean, I like Hawking Risk. I was there at Plumpton on his penultimate start. And that was quite a good novice hurdly one when he beat Martin of Gold. He's got all that experience and bumpers. He's, I'm sure he's going to be a really nice horse for Chris Gordon, whatever happens here. Isio is fascinating because he was really quite well fancied against Pied Piper at Cheltenham. It was right when those Nichols horses weren't running well. He was disappointing in fourth, but he's been well backed and uh, getting that weight. Maybe he's the danger for shall we have one more. But uh, um, a good race. I'll probably... I'd probably side with uh, Isio as a, va- a bit of value against the favourite, but you know, five to four. Shall we have one more? You could see you could see him slouching up, and that'd be a- another favourite. But I'm not going to tip him. <laughs> yeah, it looks like you're having a, uh, a six-fold favourite roll-up at this uh, <laughs> <laughs> this race, Simon. Well, it'd be terrible for the firm, so I might as well profit if they all win. You know? Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, as you pick up your P45, you can still go and collect your uh, your winning bets. So yeah, my twelve to one six-fold. Yeah, no, yeah. No. Uh, okay, the the Duffcat then. Uh, what wins it, to Paul Keeley? Uh, yeah, the five. Shall we have one more? Okay, very well. And Tom, I think you're in agreement. Yeah, that one for me too, Ross. 
Okay. Um, last time you two uh, agreed, we had a 50 to 1 winner in a grade one. So uh, probably stupid of me to disagree, but I'll go with Ork and Risk here uh, for this, uh, this Kempton contest. And Simon? I'll have a little bit on Isio and a, and a forecast. Shall we have one more to beat Isio? Okay. There you go. Jordan M says Isio background Kempton has a chance. Ignore the last run, giving weight to Pied Piper. Uh, and uh, uh, Morico Devasi, the only horse I've backed tomorrow. That's from uh, Mark B. So quite a few selections there uh, for this uh, three o'clock contest over at Kempton. Uh, let's uh, leave Kempton then and go north to, uh, to Newcastle, far the, uh, the Ida uh, here where, uh, as I said, we have uh, good to soft ground at Newcastle for the Ida meeting, which is practically unheard of. Uh, history of fashion, uh, a Claire Surf, our six to one joint favourites for this year's staying chase. Eight to one, Win My Wings, eight to one, Dan Lino Dairy, nine to one, Courtmaster, ten to one, Domain de Lille, twelve to one, Just Your Type, and um, check it out is 12 to 1. Bigger price is the, uh, the rest. Uh, just before I ask Paul what his selection is, how many places have we got here on this? Uh, we've got any extra each way terms, Simon? Uh, we are fifth the five, I believe. Very well. Fifth. Oh. I think I'm just checking, but yes, I'm pretty sure we're five. <laughs> no, no, I'll take, you, I'll take you at your word, Simon. Yeah, uh, five places to aim for then for Paul Keeley, who loves. A handicap chase. Yeah, I love a big handicap chase. Always have done. Uh, yeah, I think I think history of fashion is is the correct favourite. I think he, he won really well at Down Royal last time. It looked like it was it, it, it was at three mile. It looked like it only just started. You know, it, all these horses. Well, for a lot of these horses anyway, it's just shot in the dark going four mile one and a half. But I mean, he looks like an out and out stayer to me. Uh, he's he's eleven pound higher. But interestingly, the hand, the, the BHA handicap has only put him two pound higher than his Irish mark, which. You know, any trainer going to any Irish trainer going to Cheltenham next month and only gets two pound on their Irish <laughs> mark will be absolutely delighted. Uh, so yeah, I think he's been very, very fairly treated. He's a novice, um, but he, he jumps perfectly well enough. Uh, so I think he'll, I think he'll go close. And I thought as a, a, a bigger price, an outsider was Rathan Ua. I think it's called that, Rathan Ua. Uh, trained Probably by not, but I appreciate it. Trained by, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it go, it? Uh, trained yeah. by Rose Dobbin, uh, who trained the winner in 2016. Um, won both starts last year, beat Alnadam. Stayed on too strongly for him over two and a half at Carlisle. Uh, Alnadam was £20 higher a, a couple of months later. Uh, and uh, then, he won, then he won, stepped up to three mile, and he won as he liked. Uh, and he's been dropped two pounds. He's only eight pound higher than when he beat Alan Adam. Uh, he got dropped for finishing last of five at Air, but he would have needed that run because it was his first run for nearly 400 days. Uh, and they went an absolute crawl, which won't have suited him because he's a stayer. Uh, and he was still there at, at the second last anyway. So, uh, you know, I, I just think it was a nice warm up run. He's been laid out for the race. Trainers are a bit worried the ground might not be soft enough for him, but uh, I think the trip might compensate for that and he'll be all right. Okay. Uh, so a couple against the uh, the field then for uh, for Keels here for the uh, the Ida, uh, Rathanur, sure that's my go is uh, is a twelve to one shot. Apologies for uh, the mispronunciations uh, there. I'm sure uh, the the Ida then here uh, Tom, like I said, yeah, I, I, I remember some races. I can't remember the name of the Howard Johnson horse. Um, Blue and red silks won this a few years comp. ago and or comp something like that. Comp uh, comp at all? I can't oh, remember. No, I can't remember. Well, it was it was. It was didn't it? They were. I mean, it, it, I, th I thought someone had paused the uh, pause the replay <laughs> at one point as they uh, as yeah. they jumped the last. But uh, this should be very different, though. Um, we've got a couple of young progressive types. Even though, even when it is good to soft ground or faster at, uh, in the Ida, though, it's still a bit of an old man's game. You know, you've got nine year olds, ten year olds, eleven year olds winning it, um, and um, you know, a big field round Newcastle over a trip that most of these won't have experienced. It's gonna it's gonna test a few of them. Yeah, absolutely. Uh... Slightly against Keels, I, I'm, I don't really fancy hype history of fashion. I think you've got, got to factor in a lot of improvement for me. I mean, the form of that race last time hasn't worked out that well, but he is an Irish horse coming over. The trainer bought Mr. Fogpatch is over uh, to run third in the Scottish National. So he'll know where he stands. And that's I presume that's why he's at the top of the market. Actually, on form, I think he's got, he's got loads to do. But uh, I'm not, you know, he could be a different horse over four miles on, on good ground. That's what I'm sure everyone's expecting. But I came up with a really sneaky one, which I now see his third favourite and <laughs> challenge for second. Win my wings for Christian Williams. Uh, I thought he, she, before I call her a he, she was incredibly impressive at Exeter last time. She came from miles back. And if she doesn't stay four miles, I will give up because it looks like exactly what she needs. 
The form has worked out really well. Run to Milan won since. Edith's with a fourth horse has won since. And Classic Ben was second in the uh, in the Devon National today, running a cracker. Looks all over if he was going to, as though he was going to win. Uh, he's gone up. He, he would be higher in the weights. He's gone up three pounds since the, the, this came out, just for doing nothing. She has gone up three pounds for doing nothing. And I just think she's crying out for a step up in trip. And all his life, Christian Williams has said what she needs is good ground. And when she won at Cheltenham uh, last year or the year before, over three two, it was good ground, and she flew home. She was she was she was level jump in the last and ended up winning by ten. I think she's crying out for four miles. I was very keen to back her at twenty to one. Now she's eight and probably going to be six by the time we finish this. Uh, I'm not so you know she's probably she might be one of those that isn't great value now but might be value at SP. But I'm keen on her. I think she'll run really well. Okay, win my wings then. That's eight to one for Christian Williams who uh, could have a good afternoon in. Uh, a variety of races. We'll get to the Coral Trophy. He's got a couple of chances there. But yeah, I mean, I, I remember because I back run to Milan that day, Tom, and I, I still can't quite work out how uh, how he got beat. And I, I I remember the commentator saying, "Here comes Win My Wings," and I was watching, thinking, "Where, where, where, where is this horse?" And suddenly she she absolutely rattled home. Um, but uh, it's uh, yeah, and, and that's quite rare for a staying handicap chase. Like I said, most of them get get won by horses like Run to Milan who get get loose and just keep jumping. Yeah, and look, he's cheek pieces for the first time. I think I think Christian Williams is a little bit concerned she might get sort of out of her ground, but I don't think that will be a problem here. Love the booking of Ryan Mania. What a great mm. jockey he is to have on your side in staying chases. Vintage Clouds, Grand mm. National winner, uh, Midnight Shadow. You know, he's, he's he, I love him in these staying handicap chases uh, and big valuable handicap chases, so I'm very pleased to see him on board. I just think she'll run really well. I think she's got everything in her favour. Okay, yeah, and he was um, a winner on Empire Steel the other day, wasn't it? Uh, over at Kelso as well. Uh, quick shout out for Court Master. I thought I had a little bit of a chance here as well. A, a nine-year-old who's been running some pretty good races at uh, Cheltenham behind Commodore and behind Cap Course at Newbury. This track I thought should uh, should suit uh, that one down to the uh, the ground. Was a winner last time out in a small field, very different, but um, seems to be pretty versatile. Yeah, that makes all the running or gets tailed off and rattles home. So. Uh, Court Master, I thought, could be interesting here for the Ida, but five places to uh, to aim for, and uh, yeah, a, a, a real staying test here, Simon. Yeah, I mean, a great field, and, and I say great that it's been run on better grounds. It can be an unedifying spectacle on heavy, that's for sure, and um, only one favourite in 10 years, and I suppose it's a really competitive race, that's not to be, uh, that's almost to be expected. I just, I just having tipped favourites all, all the way at uh, Kempton, I'm going for a mad outsider here, because this Gwen Silly Burbas went off eight to one at Sandown on heavy ground, which he just didn't want. You know, he'd won on uh, he won over three miles six on good to soft ground at Exeter um, under Tom Scudamore. He'd been running in May at a Foss Lass on better ground, running well. I think it was second at Kelso. He just hated the mud at Sandown. Back over an extreme trip on better ground. Um, I know Tom Scudamore, uh, you know, thought thinks he's a nice horse. So I mean, with the first girl I claim three, thirty-three to one, I thought I'd, I'd fire a few darts at him at a massive price. Okay, yeah, a few darts at a massive price. That's more like it, Simon. That's what we uh, <laughs> that's what we want uh, for the uh, the Ida. Then uh, a couple of darts for Paul Keeley. Yeah, history of fashion, something I'm obviously an expert at, and uh, <laughs> and Rathan something. Yeah, there you go. That's uh, lovely stuff. Yeah, history of uh, history of fashion. Is that what you studied at uni? Is it? <laughs> All right. Yeah. So, uh, a couple then for uh, for Keels. Tom, what did you what did you fancy in the Ida? I win my wings for me. When my wings then is uh, an eight to one shot. I will go for uh, for Court Master at nine to one for Michael Scudamore and uh, Simon a mad outsider, please. Yeah, Gwen Silly Burbass for the David Park Pipe Yard. They're the winner today. They're in reasonable form, and there is an in the no special a female trainer to win the Ida. One hundred to thirty from eleven to four. You get Emma Lavelle's a Claire Surf, Rose Dobbins Rathan Lure, what it's called, and uh, Venetia Williams Achille running for you for that special. Okay, bit of a price boost there for the Ida then at Newcastle. As we uh, swing back over to uh, to Kempton uh, for a, a big pot, eighty five thousand four hundred and twenty five pounds on the at the table for the winner then uh, of the uh, the Coral Trophy this year. Uh, Fourteen runners, like I said, it'd be nice to get twenty uh, next year, uh, but uh, still a a good lineup uh, for the the Coral Trophy uh, this uh, this season. Uh, as I uh, await betting on my screen for the big race of the afternoon. There we go, <laughs> the Coral Trophy. Uh, and it's Ansem at 5-1. to one. Captain Nord, 15-2. to two. Five Star Getaway, 8-1. to one. The Big Breakaway, 8-1. to one. Phoenix Way, 9-1. to one. And Rillo, 9-1. to one. Zaguli is 10s. Galahad Quest is 10-1. Uh, is to one. 
as well. This is more like it, the Connell Trophy Handicap Chase. And a horse that's not on your screen there. If we just get, can we get the producers to just, just go onto the second page, just have a little scroll down. Is that gonna, is that gonna work? Are we gonna possibly, possibly no, get I that know. the producers? <laughs> we know, we know it. Get the little drum roll, get the drum roll going. Get, there Where it is. is. 11 to one. If it isn't yeah. the Scrabble <laughs> King himself, Zanza, for Paul Keeley. Keels. Oh, yeah. Are we giving him another chance? Oh, yeah, yeah, we are. Yeah, I can't help it. Um, <laughs> you just can't know, help horses yourself, get in your head, don't they? Uh, and he's <laughs> they one do. of them. And he's one of them. Yeah. But you know, I, I even got trolled by uh, one of the joint owners of Five Star Getaway, Carl Hinchy, went on Twitter and said Keely will be tipping this next year in the Ida, and I hope that four miles will have jump. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, but, but yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm hoping the flatter track. I'll, I'll let you come out with this, this, the great stat you told me beforehand uh, uh, about uh, about him on flatter tracks. But all his best form prior to this year was on uh, dead flat tracks, and he still ran some really, really hot races in those good races at Cheltenham until last time when he just blundered his way out of contention and pulled up. He's been freshened up. Um, to me, I mean, he was running two mile last year, but to me, he's shaping like a stayer. He's, 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 pretty, he's bred pretty stoutly. Uh, and if he gets his jumping together, he is a very, very well handicapped horse. And whether, whether he does or not, we will just have to wait and see. I, I will say that he, yeah, this is really competitive. I don't think Cole can moan about how competitive the race is, but to have 14 runners for a race that mm. has more prize money than any handicap at Cheltenham, and you know that at Cheltenham um, they'll have 14 horses balloted out of every one of them. Yeah. Like, you know, it's absolutely and, and crazy. And you'll have Irish horses I mean, yeah. coming out well, of the yeah, well, as well. I, mean, I just don't know what people are up to. Like, you know, if I had a horse good enough to run in this race, it would definitely be in it. Uh, but there you go. Uh, it's the cult of Cheltenham, Paul. It is, yeah, it is, yeah. I just don't, I don't understand. I don't understand it. Like, you know, I mean, this is a very, very good race, a good race meeting. Like, you know, so why not running it? But there you go. Yeah. Uh, anyway, well, we should buy one. Let's share a club together. Anyway, I, I also given another chance to Phoenix Way, who, okay. who I backed over two mile five last time on, on the, on the thought that he would appreciate dropping back in trip, having seemingly been outstayed by Anne Sam at Ascot. Now I went back and I looked at the race again and again and again and I thought, well, hang on a minute, he was pulling away from the third again going towards the line and it may just have been the case that it was only his second run of the season and he'd run appallingly first time and he might have just needed it. And, you know, let's face it, he's beaten Fanny and Decival and he did it fairly cosily. Fanny and Decival's come out and run three and a half lengths to a proper grade one horse in fact, who do dairies uh, next time. That's a really good piece of form. Phoenix Way did win a Potemps qualifier over three mile one furlong at Huntingdon. Uh, as, a, as a hurdler, so he probably does stay, in, in which case I'll give him another shot uh, at Antrim. I uh, don't know whether he want gr drying ground or not, but I, you know, I think he's an improving horse and he's definitely worth a shot. Yeah, and the big plus for him is um, Harry Fry's a, he's a bit of a street trainer. They do run in, in bursts and he's had two winners at Exeter today, including a stay in handicap chaser. Yes, in, yeah, in absolutely, Drake. yeah. Yeah, uh, but uh, and he won this race with opening batsman, and then you think he had opening batsman finished second mm. in it as well. So he's got a bit of previous. Yeah, and Philip Hobbs, like you were saying, Philip, Philip Hobbs has won it four before. times. I mean, the last time was in two thousand and eleven yeah. uh, when the Racing Post still sponsored the race yeah. back then. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, he's got a good, he's got good back history with the race, and I, I think he's got a live challenger. Okay, there we go. Wide, wide open race then here, and I, th I think I think I must have gone mad because uh, I, I don't know, maybe missing a show is. Uh, as, 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 as rewired the brain, but I, th I do think Zanza's got a chance as well. Because <laughs> I tried to go through and work him out, try to work what is it that Zanza wants, and, uh, and I kind of had a look at his, uh, his form. Uh, he's, he's run six times on undulating uh, stiff tracks uh, and four times on flat tracks. He's made nine mistakes, whether that's Pecton, Landing, Blunder, whatever, uh, unseated his driver and fall, uh, fallen uh, on, uh, on those other tracks. Uh, but at your Aintrees, at your Warwicks, uh, on your flatter tracks, he's not made a single mistake, Zanza. So... I think he's clearly a bit of a, bit, Ross, of a, a bit of a flat track bully, Tom. Yeah, I know, I know. I think I've gone mad. I genuinely think I've gone mad. I've been drink. I've, I'm, I'm, yeah. I've joined. I've joined the, the cult of Zanza. I need to be. I need to stop saying that word because that's. Uh, we're gonna. I'm gonna make a mistake in a minute. But uh, what? Uh, what do you think wins the big race, uh, Tom? I know you were. You were very keen on Ansem uh, last time out. Yeah, I love Ansem. I'm, his, I'm a fully paid-up member of his fan club. I'm just slightly worried about the form of Evan Williams. Uh, he's had a lot of horses run below Paris, and he had a winner at Catterick, but a lot of a lot of his fancied horses haven't been running that well. In contrast, his Welsh namesake, Christian Williams, 
he's having a fantastic run. He had two uh, horses run at Ludlow at the week, one of them at 50 to 1, which should have won, and one of them at 9 to 1, making his handicap debut that did win. Then he went the next day and had another winner. So uh, I'm quite interested in Cap Du Nord as a horse. I personally I haven't fanci- don't fancy him necessarily for tomorrow, simply because he's run twice really badly at this track. He jumped awfully in this race last year. He's 15 pounds higher. He still finished fifth. But he came back and was favourite for a race uh, that uh, Fortescue ran in, the five-star getaway race. And he was horrible. He was right out the back. I think he's the fancied one of their horses tomorrow. I could see him going well, but I'm worried about his jumping. If Ansam is over, it isn't what well, isn't all isn't falling foul of uh, the Chris, uh, the Evan Williams lurgy. If he has a lurgy, I think he's got a massive chance because I thought he was incredibly impressive at Ascot. He went off hard. He jumped brilliantly, and all the ones that came to challenge him came from way off the pace. All the ones that were up with him, including Kothcap, Kothcap gave up. He refused. That's how, uh, how how hard they'd gone early on. And he still fought them off and was going away at the line. I think he's got a massive chance, but I am worried about the uh, Evan Williams stable form. So like Keels, I think Phoenix Way has a chance of turning the tables. I'm on Phoenix Way today. I don't have any issue with him at three miles at all. If you watch that uh, Fanny and Destreval race last time when they went hard on soft ground, I can't imagine that he's not going to stay. I think he's guaranteed to stay three miles. He's only up six pounds for that. They were miles clear of the rest. I think he's got a very big chance. And the other one I like is Enrillo. I know he's an old boy that's had, uh, he's, uh, he's had uh, things go wrong and he's a bit of a quirky character. He obviously threw away the uh, Bet365 last year when he bumped into Kitty's light. I mean, he was the moral winner, the unluckiest loser. If you backed him in the Bet365 last year, he was the unluckiest loser I think I've ever seen. Because he jumped, he was cantered all over the field. He then blundered at the second, or overjumped at the second last, lost all momentum. And then he still hold up, still won, and he would have won whatever happened and got thrown out because he'd smashed, he smashed, he caused Kitty's Light not to finish second. But he, on that form, he's got a huge chance. You have to remember that Paul Nichols fancied him for the, uh, for the Labrooks trophy, and he was, he was running really well. I think he would have been involved in the finish when he came down. Forget the Cheltenham run, made an early mistake, probably ran him too soon afterwards. Paul Nichols has got a great record in this race. He reminds me very much of Rocky Creek, who won it a few years back, who was sort of came from nowhere, was a proper sort of novice, and then came back to win this one off a big weight. I can just see him running really well. Whether this is the target or he's targeting the Bet365, again, I'm not sure. But I thought in terms of class, Enrillo could just sort of be the, be the one. But I am very scared of Phoenix Way. So those were my two, Enrillo and Phoenix Way. Okay, very well. Phoenix Way, yeah, uh, and uh, and Rillo, yeah. Paul Nichols, he hasn't won it for a few years, has he? Since Rocky Creek, no. but he's had plenty, plenty hit the frame. Uh, obviously, Black Quarter ran a cracker a couple of seasons ago. Sam Matagal and uh, Art Moresque as well hit the uh, the frame. So uh, wide open uh, race then. Uh, a real, like you said, it's a shame we haven't got the maximum twenty, uh, Simon. But um, <laughs> there's certainly, you know, it's it's not a not a uh, a poor lineup by any stretch. And uh, the one horse we haven't mentioned, presumably, to give you the uh, the open goal far. The, uh, the big breakaway, which we talked about last time out, <laughs> and uh, he, he ran an absolute cracker over hurdles, and presumably, given the uh, the yard um, uh, when this was Mr Malarkey a couple of seasons ago, this has been the target. Yeah, it has been for some time. I mean, they won it with their theatre guy before that, um, and you know, the big breakaway ran that second to Chantry House. Uh, obviously, it was actually running a really good race in Newton Abbott behind Brave Man's Game, which wouldn't have been that wouldn't have been a track that would have suited the, the big breakaway. It's quite a big horse, and. Um, to throw out the Chantry House race, I thought it was a good run at Newby last time, exactly what they wanted you know, to prep for this. That was the plan. Um, and I think, yeah, the two to nine chance obliges. I really like the big breakaway, and I'm going to have a few quid on him. Um, in terms of the field as a whole, I think I'll, I, you know, you, I'll give the benefit of the doubt to the fact that we've had no abandoned racing. All the sort of staying chases have been on, mm. and we know that it takes a while to change trainer behavior. However much you shout about the increased pot, um, you know, you know, Chant will be a full field, albeit half the field in the ultimate will be probably Irish horses or certainly a, a good number of them. Just, so, just out of interest, Simon, when 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 do you when was it announced the increased pot? Because like you said, if it does, if people have been targeting races like this for, for weeks and months uh, and they go, oh, we didn't realise that it was worth 85 grand. Like you said, it might take a season to. Yeah, it, we, we, we was, it was I think it was mid-December. It was it was relatively late, but that was still two months ago. So I don't think I just think looking at next year, you'd be really disappointed if you don't get more runners and it's not all about number of runners because you know you can have a competitive rate you know this is a great race good 14 runner race but um yeah we'll 
but I say benefit of the doubt. What's frustrating is I think they go, you know, there is a narrative about it's all about prize money, but I think we know there's other facts at play, isn't there? It's not just about prize money, and that uh, draw of Cheltenham and the spring festivals just seems so strong that uh, when you're trying to address the January February period, you are always battling against that, which is frustrating because you can run at this and run at Cheltenham. Actually, it's three weeks, so yeah. you know, let's let's we'll, we'll digress. But the Welsh challenge is fantastic. Five runners from Wales in a 14-runner field. The Inderno Special is six to four, a Welsh trained winner. That was even money. I think it works out as a value you play if you want a patriotic bet. You Welsh punters. Uh, but for me, the big breakaway is my fancy. I also like Good Boy Bobby. Then I just put some Davies horse. He's run really well this season, improved the step up in trip, and he'll be up near the front, which I think will help. And he's a rhythm horse, which I think will suit this track. So he's the other one for me. OK, uh, 64 out from even money, then a Welsh train winner of the, uh, the Coral Trophy. And like you said, that might, prize money might not be the, uh, the only angle. I think if you're uh, uh, a, an owner in National Hunt Racing, um, you're not getting into it to make money, are you? That's, so <laughs> prize money's probably not going to be the angle. Uh, it, is, uh, it is love and obsession, as you uh, you have with a particular horse. What's yeah. the tip for this one, uh, Paul? Yeah, I, just, I was going to say, I, I backed a big breakaway last time over hurdles because he jumps fences like hurdles and he jumped the hurdles like fences. So <laughs> he did, yeah. Who knows what he's going to do? Um, he would have won the Corto Star um, if he'd have jumped one of the last three right mm. uh, and would have beaten Sham Blue. So he's obviously got the talent, but, you know, I mean... You know, I've got another dodgy jumper with his hands are I, so I can't say too much against the selection. <laughs> yeah. So, Glass hands so and all yes, that. <laughs> exactly. Zanzer and Phoenix Way uh, are the two for me, anyway. Okay, very well. And I will uh, go and get my uh, my head checked uh, and uh, have a little each way tickle on Zanzer. Actually, probably a win tickle on Zanzer because it could go either way. Uh, Tom Siegel, though, has not been not been convinced. No, no, not Zanzer for me. I'll leave that to you, fruit bats. Uh, I am going for Enrillo and Phoenix Way. Very well. And, uh, and Simon? The big breakaway and good boy Bobby. Thank you very much. Uh, plenty of tips uh, on the, uh, the chat for, for this race, but we've got two more races to, uh, to rattle through, albeit uh, Keels won't have a lot to say on the last one. Uh, the, the 410 at Kempton, though, is a handicap hurdle here over two miles and five furlongs, and uh, Pam Sly is in a rich vein of form with half a piece at 9-2 to two at the top of the betting. Herbie 8 is 11-2. Flashing Glance is 6-1. to one. Storm Dennis 13-2. to two. Dargianini is 7-1. to one. Lidford at 15-2. to two. And Stoner's Choice 17-2. to 10-1 to one and bigger the rest. 11 run for this, uh, at this handicap hurdle. Uh, a couple of horses coming into it uh, in very good winning form here. Tom Siegel. Uh, two more races to go. What is your penultimate tip? Oh, I've done a lot of work on this one, Ross. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Did you know it was on? <laughs> no, no clue. No clue. Herbie for me, though. Uh, really impressive at Ascot and Sandown last year. Likes good ground. Like the trainer. Paddy Brennan booked. Uh, he'll do for me. Herbie Lovely stuff. Uh, I don't know what the, uh, the spread is on whether you'll say less on this than Keels will on the Winter Derby, but let's, uh, let's find out. Uh, what did you make of this handicap hurdle? Uh, yeah, a bigger price. I liked a Stoner's Choice. I thought you had a really good race two starts ago at Musselburgh. Uh, I was giving 33 and £31 pound to, the, to the two who finished ahead of him. Uh, the winner has run well since. Went on to Ascot next time in a race won by Unexpected Party. I think the ground has got too soft for him, but even so, he was still only beating 15 and a bit lengths, giving £9 pound to a horse who's now... Well, among the favourites for the Coral Cup off a £12 higher mark. I think it was uh, a perfectly reasonable run. He's down in class again on better ground, right-handed track. All that suits him. Uh, I think he'd go well at price. OK, yeah. I'm not, I mean, that, um, I know it was, it was last season, but that Ascot form, he beat a couple of nice horses there. He won a few races. And yeah, I, I was looking at him thinking, he's seven years old. I'm sure he races every other week. Yeah, yeah. He seems like one of those tough horses that's been around a fair bit, isn't yeah. he? But he's also... I think he's dropped about six pounds this season as well. I think he's, you know, I think he's on a win, winning mark unless something is a bit more progressive. But uh, I think he's good enough to win this. Okay, uh, there we go. Stone of choice is seventeen to two shots. Storm Dennis would be a, uh, an apt winner, although um, we'll probably have to go round again to uh, to get to uh, to D again for uh, for Chris Gordon. Uh, I thought Flashing Glance had a little bit of a, a squeak for Tom Lacey and Stan Shepherd, another one who's been very well handicapped and uh, backing. Tom Lacey and Stan Shepard trained uh, handicap hurdles on a Saturday. He's been pretty profitable recently, as the man to my left uh, has, uh, has found out. And, um, yeah, he, he finally knuckled down to uh, to win. He's a, another one who didn't like fences, but he is a lot better over hurdle and is well handicapped. So uh, there's a few for this, uh, this 4.10. Uh, Simon, uh, what have you got? Right. Well, five out of the last ten winners have been uh, 10 to 1, 11 to 1 or 12 to 1, which is, you know, bucks the sort of trend at Kempton where you often find sort of form standing up. And Solwara won... Uh, ran really well at Ancient in a, in a decent handicap hurdle last year, finished sixth. 
of the same mark today. He went for Chase. It was 11 to 8, favourite to beat uh, Pick Glory, albeit in a novice handicap. Chase, so off that mark. Um, fell twice, went over hurdles, unseated, 16 to 1. I think he's a cracking price, the yards in reasonable form. And Kerry's Commodity, another one who fell when would, would, would have probably, may well have beaten Cap or Ty the time before. Something went wrong last time, been given a long break in John Joe's yard in good form. And I think he might run well at 12 to 1. So I'm backing the outsiders, both of them. To, uh, having with all the favourites having won earlier, this is where the bookies get their relief. Yeah, you've gone one extreme to the other for the uh, last few races <laughs> there, uh, there, Simon. Uh, just a quick word to you, Kills, because um, Stevens ninety nine said Max Kendrick. Why don't they ever discuss jockeys? You'd think they didn't matter. Um, again, certain things in racing people people focus on, people ignore. Max Kendrick's only had three winners this uh, this season. Does that bother you? Uh, not really. No. I mean, I like I, you know. I look at the horse. Always look at the horse. Yeah. Uh, everything else is, is is neither here nor there to me. Okay. Right, yeah. I think he's okay. Probably doesn't get an awful lot of chances, does he? He runs a lot of outsiders and that, so yeah, no, it's not going to bother me in the slightest. Okay, there you go. Well, we discussed it, Stevens, and uh, dismissed it <laughs> apparently mm. for uh, uh, for that one. But uh, you're going with uh, with Stoner's Choice, and was there another one, or was it just Stoner's Choice? Yeah, just Stoner's Choice. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Uh, and uh, and Tom. Uh, yeah, lot as I say, Herbie for me. Herbie eight is. Uh, I will go with uh, with flashing glance for the Lacey and Shepherd combination. And uh, Simon, Kerry's commodity and Solwara one, both each way. Okay, lovely stuff. Uh, last race, uh, then uh, we're going to look at uh, uh, <laughs> the guys in the gallery. Clearly agree with Paul Keeley uh, that uh, flat racing is not for this time of year because we don't have any uh, graphics for it <laughs> for the uh, the winter derby over at Linkfield. Uh, so we'll go to you, Tom. Uh, a Group Three with a couple of Group One winners. Uh, or Group One horses, at least at the uh, the top of the betting uh, here, and an eight runners for a winter derby is um, it's practically a bumper lineup this year. Yeah, I don't know what's the problem. I like it. I'm I'm a big fan of the winter derby. I think this is as good a winter derby as we've had. We've got North mm -hmm. North, who won the Prince of Wales, is, haven't we? We got Alan Kerr, who was one of the best three year olds of last season, uh, and we've got my fancy, the fancy man, who I think is 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 has been the one that's been trained for the race. I think Lord North we haven't seen for a bit. Never won on the all, never run on the all weather. Alan Kerr, I think, better over a mile and a half off a strong pace. I'm not sure Lingfield will suit him. And Fancy Man beat Alan Kerr as a two year old, and he beat him by miles at Haydock one day. And I think he just sort of one of those horses that missed out his three year old season. Maybe he was big, I don't know. But he seemed like back. He's two from two at Lingfield. He was very impressive last time off a slow pace, and I think he's going to outrun his odds. I think he's about four or five to one. And I thought him against the top two at the market who have questions to answer was uh, was worth taking. OK, there you go. Uh, fancy man, man. Uh, you're looking at me like you might have something <laughs> to say here, Paul. Well, I was actually going to say, it was a good job the producer told us to hurry up because I neither know nor care what was going to win this race. But, uh, <laughs> but no, having, uh, having had a very look, very look, good, quick look at the quotes, uh, apparently the Haggis team only have Alan Kerr 80% fit, which means Lord, Lord North will just win. OK, there you go. Good. Um, a bit, yes. Admittedly, I mean, I've Alan, a lot of study into that one. Yeah, you've, uh, <laughs> is this how you do all your studying? <laughs> Pretty much on the spot while Tom talks <laughs> in the background. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, it is an interesting winter derby. I, I think. I mean, like I said, I, yeah, I, I think the last few years have put me off the race because there have been a bit small fiddly events. But um, the Goslings, of course, have won the last three. Uh, Alan Kerr, though, is the same price to win the winter derby as he was. Uh, uh, to uh, to beat Hurricane Lane pretty much in the uh, Grand Prix de Paris, so uh, it's uh, it's an intriguing little lineup. But Simon, uh, sign us off with something for the Winter Derby, please. I think I think it's great. Just we got you know, a Prince of Wales winner, a Dubai Turf winner, and Lord North that won two point three million pounds, and here he is racing at Linkfield. And um, I sort of think I sort of half expect him to win, but honestly, having listened to Tom make the case for Fancy Man, that does look the value play, doesn't it? So uh, yeah, I'm, my head's firmly in jump racing as well. So this is probably. Uh, not ideal for me, but I'll I'll I'll, um, I'll stick with the favourites. Be true to most of my form tonight. You've, uh, you've you've come back to where you started there. Simon. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Lovely stuff. Uh, we've got a price boost though. Apparently on the screen, that's oh. we've got that graphic. Okay, yes, Lord North <laughs> to win the Winter Derby by over one and three quarter lengths. I'm reading off the screen. Beautiful stuff, Simon. Beautiful. We could all read it off the screen. Um, <laughs> three to one up from five to two. Lord North to win the Winter Derby by over one point seven five lengths. Ultra specific there for the the Winter Derby. There, right. Uh, before we let you go uh, for the uh, the uh, Friday night in the know, uh, let's get the uh, the naps for Saturday's action then. Uh, like I said, it's gonna they're gonna come in very different races based on what the, the pundits have been tipping uh, so far in the evening. I'll start off with the man to my left, Paul Keeley, nap of the day. Let's go for it. Zamza! <laughs> of oh, course. Of course. 
<laughs> I'm going to clip that out as a uh, as a gif <laughs> and uh, and play it back regardless <laughs> of the result. Tom Siegel. <laughs> It's definitely not Zanzibar. If that wins, wait, wait. oh my is it, boy. Is it Mondemej, Tom? Is it Mondemej? Is it Mondemej? It's definitely not. Oh, yeah, he <laughs> runs tomorrow, doesn't he? We got through the whole show without mentioning yeah. Mondemej. I had to bring it in. Club are out. Yeah. It's, I might impulsive watch that one. it's impulsive one in the Adonis. I think he's a cracking price. Very well. Impulsive one in the Adonis. Uh, I will go for Orkin Risk uh, to beat Shall We Have One More in the, the Dovecote Novices Hurdle. Uh, Simon Clare. And I'll go for Day Rand Karjak, which I think three of us went from the 115. So uh, the Alan King horse. Okay, there we go. Lovely stuff. Uh, that brings in the note to an end. Uh, and I'm off to place a Zanza Mondemesh double. Uh, <laughs> and uh, happy days on Saturday afternoon. Uh, thank you, uh, thank you, Keels. Uh, thanks, uh, Tom. No thank you, Simon. We'll be uh, we'll be back on Monday night. Yep. Uh, where we'll be uh, previewing all sorts of uh, Cheltenham action. Uh, and uh, I mean, if Zanza wins, uh, we're going to have a cracking interview on Monday, Simon. Yes, because our special guest is no less than Philip Hobbs. So maybe fantastic. that's a good omen, Paul. Yeah, we celebrate fantastic. On Monday yeah, with the trainer. Brilliant. <laughs> I'll be talking to him for 10 minutes solid about Zanza. Uh, lovely stuff. Thanks to everyone for, uh, for watching the, uh, the stream as well. If you haven't already, please do like it and subscribe to the, uh, the Racing Post channel as well. Uh, enjoy your, uh, your afternoon on Saturday. We'll be back on Monday night. Good night from us. <laughs>